jump call in right now, so let's just let's just wait. Okay, so what? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hey, what's up? Yeah, hey. this is me, Zero. What's going on, Zero? Hey, man. Hey, wife. Uh, thank you very much for doing this, man. Oh, it is entirely our pleasure. Are we uh, on the stream now, or are we about yes. to be? Yes, we are live. We're live right now. Fantastic. Listen, we're in the car right now. I'm going to just type it for. It's uh, me. I've got husband driving. My little brother Silence in the back, and also an intend dude. That's awesome. Yo, say it, say hi to everyone from my part. Hello, say hello, everyone. <laughs> What's going? On? <laughs> hey. Awesome, awesome. You so guys, you guys raising a lot of money today? Yes, so far we are almost we're very close to having um seven hundred dollars so far. Hey, it's a great start. That's a great start. So yeah, um. First of all, I would like to request your favor. Can you move the microphone a little bit closer to your mouth so so everyone can make sure to hear you? Absolutely. All right, awesome. Thank you very much. So, how much time do you have uh, on right now to be able to get an interview so I don't get on your way? We're just driving right now. Uh, Morgantown is the next stop. That's in it. I mean, at least twenty minutes from now. So please go for it. All right, man. Awesome, awesome. So so right now we have about four hundred people right now in this stream. So. So yeah. Um, so first of all, my first question is, um, what was your initial reaction when uh, Travis came to you about this Smash Bros. documentary project? Uh, well, hello, 400 streamers. I'm really glad you guys are all watching and supporting. My first reaction when Samox came to me was that, I mean, it sounded fine and nice and cute, I guess, but I had a very low level of confidence that the project would be completed let alone would be a really solid uh, piece of work like it is. I was very surprised. I was proven wrong when it ended up being a phenomenon. That's that's awesome. Uh, and the fact that it's awesome because we all, uh, you know, you got surprised because the product ended up being so really good. I was like, I, I had a lot of really high hopes because I, I started the Palo episode. He, he was, uh, he, Samux, I just interviewed Samux, and he was telling me how, how Chilling was really impressed with it, and I was also very impressed with it. So I'm really glad it turned out to be to be such a good thing for the community. Thank <laughs> you. I didn't really follow it. I wasn't watching the episodes that he was leaking ahead of time, so they didn't have the same face. I think I made the mistake of overlooking him first time around, which is why I'm so committed to making sure this second chapter happens, mm -hmm. because now we do, and I want to make up for last time when I didn't really back him like I should have. Absolutely. Now, for the second question, uh, wife, I wanted to tell you, uh, how was your actual involvement with the with the documentary? Tell me how, how it happened. Uh, well, uh, some of got a hold of me, I think it was just through Gmail, and then we talked a little bit ahead of time, and then he came just one time to my apartment, and we filmed for several hours, got a couple beers afterward, and then that was really it. He, all the magic is him. I didn't have a creative input. Uh, we didn't discuss how it was going to be used. He just asked me a lot of questions. I got to talk about myself and my favorite thing for several hours in a row. And <laughs> the documentary is, is really all him. I see. Um, a lot of people love the way you're greatly, you know, just the way you talk is like, I believe it's some form of art by a lot of people in Reddit. And I really agree with it. You're great at talking in general. You really get, you really get to express yourself in a fantastic way and I think that you made a uh, great impact on the documentary as a whole the way you narrate things and you remember everything because you were a crucial part of everything you were right in the middle basically well I appreciate that but honestly it's pretty easy to do when you're being asked about your favorite thing and I wasn't speaking like you know, war and peace or something else I was speaking about something that I think about all the time anyway so it's easy to express myself I'll, I'll be doing some commentary uh, this weekend, I hope, uh, for Fight Fit 4. Hoping to get on the mic, uh, get on the mic with husband as well for the first time since Pound 5. Should be some good commentary, you guys should all tune in tomorrow. That's awesome, that's awesome. Now, uh, a lot of people enjoy your commentary, so do I. Um, will you? What's the way you do commentary? Like, What is your philosophy on, on, on the matter? Well, it's two things. One, I think we should try to be ourselves. I've a couple times tried to prepare heavily for a commentating uh, set, and I've tried to plan out things to say ahead of time, and it comes out stiff. I think it's best to just relax 
and be yourself, but it's also important to keep talking. I think the thing that kills commentators is silence. So if you have a lot to say about the game and you're watching a good set, it should be easy to talk the whole time. And I think it's important to, to keep narrating the match. Now, we can't just call off the moves and the percentages, but as you're watching a match, if that's what keeps the energy up and keeps the flow of conversation up, then just go ahead and name what's going on. It's better than thinking about it and having the silences or being nervous. Just just let go and, and call out what you see. Most times that's going to work for you. Mm, I see. So what will you say is your style of commentary? What's the way you do commentary? What's the things you focus on? Great question. I suppose someone else has to decide what the style of commentary is, but I think that I, I enjoy at least most talking about that, what you might call color commentary. I like to know, I like to share about, you know, where the players come from. You know, have they been in the scene for seven years or three years? A humble beginnings or they start off right at the top? Have they had trouble with, you know, maybe rage quitting and anger issues in the past? Are they an underdog? That, to me, makes the match more interesting if I know what happened before the match as opposed to simply what's going on in-game. And I think more commentators should, should offer a little bit of that, especially to new watchers. They may want to know, you know, who are these kids who are playing? Where do they come from? What do they do to get here? What does the matchup mean to them? Hmm. So you definitely focus a lot on not just the game, but everything around that. I, I, I really, really agree with that. Yeah, well, a lot more commentators, not just better commentary, we need more of them. You know, it's something the scene is lacking right now just for lack of volume. So if anyone listening thinks that might be a good commentator, practice by yourself, get to a tournament, get on the mic, and see if you don't have it in you. I actually wanted to get on the mic for, for a while, honestly, but um, I'm more than anything a player. I'm, I'm currently a top bro player and also a PM player. Um, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of okay on melee too, but um, I don't know. The, the microphone kind of scares me a little bit because, especially, I have to comment in in my second language, and that's that's pretty difficult to me most of the time because uh, I have this thing where I think that people people will get annoyed of the way I say a lot of things. So I, I don't know. I get a little shy on that regard. But man, just just hearing you talk about it, I'm just like, man, screw that BS, man. I want to just do this. <laughs> so I'll definitely get to practice at one point. Uh, greatly appreciate your encouraging words. Sure. And maybe you could do a couple of sentences out there. Spanish is their first language. Hmm. Get bilingual. Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds about right. So, well, I think that a lot of people um, were really, really into your. No, no. We're really like appreciative of your actions towards the documentary and towards the experience because you also wrote a book about uh, Team Ben. And to be honest, I, I, I'm going to give you my personal thoughts on it. Um. I was I was actually like greatly touched by what you wrote because I didn't really expect or I didn't really see anything of, of that coming. You know, I didn't really, um, you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't ready at that point to be like, wow, all of this happened and, and, and you know, a lot of people and I, I didn't know about it. So it's like, wow. So my question comes to the fact that why did you decide to to write it in in the sense that do you what were you trying to, to accomplish with telling the Smash community at the same time this happened? And, and that's, that's my yeah, question. Well, look, first, of all, first of all, I'm glad you read it, and I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad it touched you. That, that's important to me. But it's not why I wrote it. I set up to write the book because it was two of the most important things that happened to me, and I wanted to connect them, and I wanted to express myself. For a long time, the project was just mine, and I didn't intend on sharing with anyone, let alone having thousands of people read it. And it was Prague... Uh, he was pushing me, as he always does, pushes and pokes and prods me, and found out that I wrote it and said, there's a lot of people who want to read this. And it was him, and I asked to give it all up to him. He convinced me to share it, and I did, reluctantly, on the stipulation that I wouldn't make any money off of it, uh, which is an important piece of this. And, and I did, I kind of put it out there at the same time I did that right at AMA, and then it just blew up. I would have been excited if a couple hundred people read it, and now I think it's maybe 3,500 people have put their hands on it, and it's it's not why I wrote it, but it's great to hear. Anything that can support the Smash scene or also let people know about, maybe if they've, you know, known someone who was killed or maybe they fall with depression, any of those purposes as well, that's, that's even better. Because it's definitely a touchy, uh, delicate topic. Like, uh, I greatly commend you for doing such a thing because I, I, if, if that happened to me, I, I wouldn't really think of doing what you did. So I really think that you're a strong person also because of being able to go through it in that way and put it in a way that's not only helpful for you but also helpful for other people, you know, because relating to the same situation 
because we don't really we don't really know you know the situation for a lot of people so the fact that you came out and just decided to I'm gonna write this you know and and the fact that I even managed to help people while doing it it's like it's like great man I really really commend you for that well hopefully other people do it Sean's thing that I'm writing a book you absolutely do that and if anybody else has a story that's intertwined with esports you know put it in writing it's great videos aren't all we can do stream isn't all we have we also have words words, words offer the means to meeting Wow, chilling writing a book. I wonder what about. Hmm. Maybe he's just he about... wants book history of Smash, and I think he's a good person to do it. I remember reading his blogs back in Smash Force about a lot of things, and they were pretty entertaining. Yeah, he's good. He's actually an excellent writer, probably a lot smarter than he let on. <laughs> uh man. All right, man. So next question. Um. So basically. Um, for a bit of the time for, for uh, in the span of the Smash community, at some point you you kind of like I don't want to say quit because no one really quits, but I will say that you you stop attending as many events as before. Um, because of the Smash vs. community, was it because you decided to come back to put in some way, or or who pushed you to come back, really, or to take well, it? Come uh, yeah, the comeback was general. And also, in my mind, I never stopped playing. Hmm. And I always played by myself. I continued to carry the passion, but I stopped going because I got legit feel like there wasn't as much to go for, which maybe was a bad attitude, to be honest. A lot of people stuck around when I left, and I appreciate that. And it was probably Nintendo was something of my, uh, my link to what's happening now. He'd say, well, there's this tournament on this date. And I'd say, nah, there's this tournament, nah. And eventually he said, guess what? Big House 3, this guy, Juggle Guy, hosts a really good tournament. It's worth going. Finally convinced me to go. And, and since then, it's been only better and better and better as we've gotten more organized, you know, more attention. And then, of course, the Smash documentary changed everything. And here we are in a Smash marathon for that purpose. Yo, Nintendo is a great guy. Not only he was he's one of the biggest people that were around for the Reddit revolution because Reddit back in the day for Smash Brothers was really small. I remember joining the Reddit when it had like what like 500 people, 300 people in. Now we have 50,000 members, and R Nintendo has been a pretty much the lead of the moderator team and just making sure the Reddit progresses forth. So props to him, and he also managed um, uh. Last weekend to get a big win on hacks, so props to him and definitely improving in every aspect. Yeah, it was giving us a little bit of that Reddit, Reddit history that we didn't know, which I enjoyed. And you know, think about that. If there's fifty thousand people on our Smash Bros, if each of them gave fifty cents, we could meet our goal. That's crazy. I, I know, I know, but that, that even though that sounds really, really convenient, really simple, I don't think it's just how it works. <laughs> oh man, what? but yeah, it is. Stop. In fact, how many members does Smash Bros. have? 200,000? More. It should have a lot more than that. Probably so. So a $26,000 goal should be easy to reach, and I'm confident we'll do it in another couple of weeks. I'm confident, too. We've only been at it since Monday, and we are... I'm going to tell you the exact amount right now. We have $12,649. Nothing so, to laugh at. So we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. I'm specifically very, very thankful of all the people, and also, in the span of the interview so far, we've gotten over $250 in donations, so thank you very much, guys. Awesome, thanks, guys. Yep. So, next question. Um, how, uh, a lot of people were have been asking me, you know, what do the top personalities in the community think about Project M? And so I pass on the question to you. What do you think about Project M? Or Project you know, Melee? The people ask, I think I'm the wrong person to ask. I respect them for doing it. I respect anyone who doesn't take a loss lying down. So we were dealt brawl, it wasn't good, and a group full of people said, you know, we're not going to take it, let's fix it. And so I appreciate it, and I would never admonish them for that. Me, I'm not interested. Me, mainly, it's all I need. It's, it's, it's my love, I don't need any more, I don't need new characters or new stages or new skins. To me, it's good. So I, I haven't played it. And I don't intend to, to be honest. I've got barely enough time to, to play Melee. But the people that are fighting for it, you know, I commend them. And, and good on them. Yeah, so that sounds... That sounds uh, that's, how, that's how a lot of people think about it. Because as Dr. PP told me earlier, he he wasn't a big fan of PM in general because he was, he was in, in love with Melee. He didn't really feel the need to 
go further than that. And Mango at the same time was like, yeah, I'm not really into the Project M train. <laughs> so so it's yeah. very interesting that, that I feel that as, as I was talking to PB, uh, Melee is kind of like your high school love. That it doesn't matter, doesn't matter how much years have went on. You still go back to that moment. Hey man, ten years ago, back in high school, that girl. <laughs> and this, this is exactly, yeah. There's something about that music at the start screen that's always gonna woo me. <laughs> it's that's a very good song though. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. It is. I love that acapella version that went around recently. If anyone can see that, they should. By uh, Scrooge, Scrooge and Goo? Smooth McGrew was the guy. I love that guy. <laughs> you know what's a big thing about me? Uh, not a big thing about me, but like a really weird uh, thing about me with, with Melee 2 is that this is back in like, what, 2007, 2006? I don't know if you know this, but... In one of the, you know how you can like watch watch some trailers or videos in this uh, in melee, you know some of the options, you know it's like obscure option where you can watch like a pre trailer for the game. Have yeah. you? Okay, so um, in that option, in one of the clips, you can see a platform in Harold Temple, and, like a platform in the middle of a stage, and, and and you can also see it in another trailer too. And I was like, I was talking to my friend right about this, and I was like. What does it even mean? Why is there a platform on the middle of a uh, Harold Temple that doesn't even, you know, make sense with the layout? Because the Harold Temple is like a stage that's kind of like gray with green, you know, and and then you have the floor uh, covered on, on on brown. But no, this was like a yellow platform with black, and I was like, what is this? I really wanted to know. I was so into it. I was really into it. Kept watching the trailer. This is back. This is back when internet wasn't that big. Social media wasn't that big. So you couldn't really go online and just be like, guys, what is this? It was up to you to discover. So, my friend told me this very weird thing. He was like, at one of the tournaments I went to, this guy asked me if, if, if he was able to counterpick uh, Harold Temple, and I said no. And then he said to his friend that was sitting right next to him, Damn it, I wanted to use the secret platform trick. I was like, did he really tell you that? <laughs> and ever since then, I haven't really been able to discover the mystery, but I'm still curious. <laughs> Never heard that before. I love it. I know. It's just there's so many things about Smash in general and, and Melee too that even to this day we keep discovering new things. So the fact that the matter that you say that you fell in love with the game, I think it's re really related to a lot of people. Uh, the game is definitely a way to express yourself. But what is the what is the thing you love about Melee? What is the thing that keeps you around for so long? Oh, ooh, wow, that's a question. Hey, can I, can I deflect that question to, to my to my car mates real fast? Because I can't think of an answer. All right, cool. Uh, husband, what is the thing that you love about Melee the most? What keeps you playing? I'm I've always been a competitor, and I always always want to get better. Uh, just earlier today, we talked about a casual tournament, and that just, it just didn't make sense to me. I don't I don't know what casual tournaments are. I, I like the competition. I like competing. I like improving myself. So it, it just keeps me around for years. Mm. Right, Nintendo. I guess just to add on to that, um, I think Melee is like the perfect vehicle for competition. Um, I just love the way that all the matchups over the years have developed and are continuing to develop such intricacies. Hmm. And uh, my little brother is the third person in the car. I don't know if you know, his gamer tag is Silence, and he's exercising that now by exhibiting his characteristic silence. I wanted to say this is somebody else's observation, not mine, but they call Melee a sandbox fighter. That's what I love most about it. It's a sandbox fighter. You can do whatever you want. Uh, in Melee, I mean, Smash in general has that feeling where where it's not like Street Fighter, for example, where you you feel the walls. You know, you, there's these walls around that kind of like limit you. There's there's the fact of the matter that you can't really, you know, maneuver yourself as well. When you decide to jump, that's say you're jumping forth. You can't really change me there. I was talking to this with my friend Bex that, you know, when you jump around to someone and you jump at someone, you can, for example, you can wait that you back at the last second. You can do, you can fast forward with the shard hop and then you can grab them. There's a mix up. You can double jump at the end of the, uh, at the end of the peak of the jump. So you trick them into grabbing you, whatever, you can you have so, those, so many mix-ups, so many ideas. If your character has multiple jumps, you can jump around forever and then randomly fall down. You can grab the ledge, you can camp the ledge. There's so many options that you can have that the game feels like 
it's just like you put it a sandbox you can do so many things that you want and that liberty that gives you a couple with the Nintendo characters I'm probably still to this day mark a lot of people's lives and then you couple that with with the fact that we have this gigantic community that we just drives people to go further and further with everything they do now we have what now we have tournaments with 700 people the I, I, I don't know about you, but like back in that time, I didn't think that tournaments were gonna be that big, and you were still around back in that day. So it's like I don't know. It's just so incredible. So I really, really agree with you when you say sandbox. That's just yeah. You got, you got the nail with the word. That's why I have so much time left in this game. <laughs> hey, so this is actually what a, what a perfect segue. Speaking of time left, my phone is about to die. I think we've got to cut this short. Sounds about right. I'm, I'm, um. Sounds about right. All right. So before we wrap up the interview, uh, wife, do you have anything you would like to say before leaving? Listen, not not to be obvious here, but it's an important cause. I just hope that everyone is watching. Donate one dollar, five dollars. I can tell you that I've been peer pressuring everyone I know to donate. I got my mom to donate twenty five dollars. If I can get my mom to donate twenty five dollars, you can get your gamer friend to donate five dollars. And if we all do that. We're going to hit the goal and exceed it and get something special. And remember, everyone has a job of being a fundraiser. All right. That's awesome, then. I want to really uh, appreciate you for your time, especially because of the situation. I also want to thank your friends and, and husband and Nintendo and also your your new your new brother, to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, right. listen, it was, it was our pleasure. We really appreciate you doing this marathon, and good luck with the rest, okay? All right, man. Have a great night. Okay, see ya. Bye-bye.